All right, I'm on my last stretch for the year and I've got 11 days to make it all the way to Oaxaca, which isn't gonna happen because that's 600 kilometers away. <laughs> so I usually walk over a 10 day period, which I refer to as a week, even though it's not. So it would have taken me a two week stretch um, to get there but I only have half of that time exactly and there's no way I can do double days especially when I'm trying to make sure that both my health and Wombat's health is in good order I don't want to push it so I've just been looking at the map and I think I can make 350 kilometers if I walk 30 kilometer days minimum for the rest of the period which is 11 days but of course if Wombat isn't going well I'm not going well I'm not going to push it We'll just have to find a way out either by hitching or there's been quite a number of um like these trucks that go past that people stand in to get to where they need to go but i feel confident that even if it doesn't go to plan i'll be able to get myself out it doesn't matter because i mean <laughs> i'm really excited for christmas and to take some time off and spend time with family and just um chill i hope to share all of that with you over the next 11 days and hopefully I'll get where I need to go. Walking through a pretty remote place and um, it's pretty unusual, so I'm getting a lot of stairs um, and people are working on the flowers here at the moment. So there's a lot of people in big groups and they're just, it's really funny passing them because they're like, um, and the women are really cool. They're all out here in these most beautiful skirts with plastic over them to protect the, the fabric. And they just give the biggest waves and it's really cool. We went a little bit further than intended and that was really just because I couldn't get a camp spot. And now I've walked at the top of a very, very big hill. <laughs> So that I can't be seen and um and it's nice it's kind of breezy and really relaxing actually um but it does mean that I'll need to leave in the light tomorrow because I don't want to go down that hill in the dark <laughs> um, and I'm not far from a um a small town so we'll go past that in the morning might even be able to pick up a, a little snack um hopefully we'll be able to find some camping sooner than what we did today poor wombat he is halfway between sleeping and wanting to know if I've got snacks. <laughs> I looked behind me and I've just left my first date. <laughs> you! It's so funny, like it's nothing, it's just a line, an invisible line, but it feels like such an accomplishment passing every state. Especially now that I'm in a country that's so big that it's going to take me a lot longer than it did to pass through the Central American countries. So... <laughs> I'm staying in a hotel tonight. Um, I think I've got heat stroke or something, which is really strange because actually I've been walking in the shade and... Um, There've been short days to get back into hiking. Um, but oof, I've had the worst headache today and it feels a lot like heat stroke. And it could just be that I'm still recovering from being unwell. <clears throat> but I'll be taking more care over the next few days to make sure I'm drinking the right amount of water. I did run low yesterday, so it's probably just that. I headed out early this morning to um, get a good start on the day and the lights just starting to come up early in the morning and I need to go to the toilet and I know this is a bit of an overshare <laughs> but I don't normally need to go every day um, so I was a bit caught by surprise and it's kind of the walking today has been a bit like this along the road no real coverage anywhere for me to go and so I'm like, oh, I could really do, please, <laughs> with a toilet. And I go around the corner and there's a shop and it's kind of in the distance and it's on a different road to the one that I'm following today. <laughs> and I can see as clear as clear that there are two toilets there and usually they're locked, but I was like, oh, I'm going to try. And I walk up to them and um, I try to open the female toilet and it's locked. 
and then I tried the mouse toilet. And not only was it open, there was toilet paper, which is awesome. Um, and there was enough room for my pack and wombat, which is great because I don't really want to leave him roaming where there could be dogs and cars. And of course, like, because I'm there, plenty of traffic went past while I was in the bathroom. Um, and then as we're leaving, we get far enough away, you know, that it's now in the distance, but heaps of dogs came out and started barking at us. So it was a good thing I could put one bed in, but also, <laughs> how good. <laughs> Check out this breast spot. It's so beautiful. There's like a little bird just sitting on that branch just there. It's really tiny. It's really cute. And Wombat's having a little rest. And he'll probably have a swim before we keep going as well. <sighs> no one told me how beautiful Mexico was going to be. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so nice. Um, and the people have been really friendly. I was warned this morning by someone who said that it's dangerous here and that I shouldn't be walking. And I was like, well, I'm here now. <laughs> and um, I kind of kicked myself because I really should ask what can't, why and like, you know, probe them for like an explanation on why they feel it's unsafe. Because usually it's just uh, that you're doing something different. But it's really good intel too if um, there's truth behind it. And I think I was saying, I have heard stories about um, some stuff that went down here a few years ago and I know that people have been through and had no problems since, uh, but there are some horrific stories about um, children going missing and the belief that they're um, having their organs harvested, which is horrific. Some people had problems with the police trying to keep them to stay and the locals were like, don't, st don't stay near the police, they, they'll um, try and take your money and all, all that sort of stuff. And this has happened years ago, but just the same. It's good to know so that I keep going, which I'll do. I'll push past this town today. I've got plenty of food until tomorrow. Um, but really, it's just been a delight, the, the real, the, you know, the, the front of my experience so far. Um, and it always, it's the same story. Like there's always bad people where there's, um, you know, in parts, but typically my experience is that people are really lovely. Um, and I'm just loving it here in Mexico, truly. And this is a big, great trail that I'm following. It's one that bikes use um, on their way through Mexico. So cyclists that are traveling from like exactly what I'm doing, but in reverse typically. I haven't seen any yet, but I'm hoping to. Tick update. It was ticks. Um, <laughs> I asked a local and he's like, oh, where were you sitting? Oh, you were sitting in one of the paddocks. Well, yeah, of course you've got <laughs> ticks. And then he sprayed me with this stuff which just killed everything. So I, now I'm like, oh, maybe I'm gonna have to carry <laughs> tick spray with me everywhere. Because um, I looked it up and there's a bit of Lyme disease, but the thing that's more common is some sort of a spotted mountain, something, something. Anyway, gross, I don't want ticks all over me, biting me, so. I was heading to a spot on Iovalanda um, that's marked as a great camp spot. spot. And it's great, it's flat and da 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 right over water, beautiful. Um, but the description was that the road's closed and it's hard to get past and it's really broken, so be careful. The road's fine. And there are like three cars and two motorbikes there, right where I was planning to camp. So good thing they were there now and didn't happen upon me. Um, and instead now I walked up this steep hill <laughs> and um, have found a spot. I'm just a bit worried that um, there might be work. There's no houses here, but workers usually have finished by now. Um, but still, I just don't want anyone to happen upon me. So I'm not gonna sit up until about four or five o'clock. Still pretty like paranoid about the ticks that are still on me. There's one right there, but they're dying. Oh, you're doing something. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I might move later once we've caught our breath and had something to eat and go just a bit further down. Um, 
just out of the sight of anywhere where the land's been worked and um, chill. Well, I'm going to chill now and worry about setting up house later. <laughs> Also, I'm making wraps and um, I thought this was spinach, but actually, I don't know if you can see, I mean, it says it right here, jalapenos. <laughs> Everything here is just like pepper obsessed. I eat the most innocent thing and my mouth is on fire, but hopefully this isn't too bad. I'm putting tuna on it, so we'll see. The tuna's probably got jalapenos in it. <laughs> I had bought cheese sauce yesterday thinking, oh, I can just make easy nachos or use it to add flavor to bread when I don't have anything else, which is often. Um, it was full of jalapenos too, so I left it behind. Wow, it's so good. I have my mouth full, sorry, hang on. This is so good, look. So the bread's not too spicy yet. I'll probably find like the lucky roulette of jalapenos in a minute. But the tuna that I have bought has like pieces of veggies in it and it looks just like the photo and it's delicious it like it tastes fresh it's amazing i'm loving mexico i thought i was out of the heat i'm really not just got a minute of shade Whew. i think i'm going to be having an early break and doing an afternoon push because this is not nice Oh, abandoned house. Duh. I've still got an hour worth of walking to do. Anyway, um, I never record when cool stuff like this happens, but a guy, hola, que tal? <laughs> Just um, drove next to me for 10 minutes. Um, for, so I had some company and he just chatted and chatted and chatted. And eventually I was like, oh, the cars are getting a bit close. And so he's headed off now. But how cool is that? And the truck drivers, they're really friendly too. That's who just beeped at me. Hey. Um, uh, I just missed showing you. Um, they have a national relay for um, the festival season, carrying a torch for the Virgin Guadalupe. And I missed it because I didn't realize what was happening. <laughs> Anyway, we gave each other a thumbs up. I got to see two other events for this. Um, this one is just school kids. They're running along a highway and they're using a truck to help keep the kids safe. There's just one truck here and so they are constantly moving and one kid will jump on and one kid will jump off and the idea is that the truck helps keep those kids safe. I have seen other events where there are two trucks. One drops the kids off ahead of time and then the one behind comes and picks them up as they go. in the laundry of a hotel i um turned up here from a recommendation on ioverlander um and then they charge me more probably because you know wombat will mean that they have to clean more um and then i was like okay but can i use your washing machine <laughs> they're really really dirty it's so bad i'm gonna have to stand here and then do it again I'm leaving town on a Sunday morning and I usually avoid Sunday mornings in, in town for this exact reason. There's heaps of drunk people around. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the festive season. I can't really be that surprised. I'm not. Can you hear that? There are monkeys in Mexico. I didn't know that. <laughs> I feel like this is another sloth moment, um, but there are two full-size toucans above my head. And they're the first that I've, I've seen toucans, but not the big typical ones that I grew up knowing about. Wait on. <laughs> Look. 
look, there's two, but you can really only just see the one. There's one, there's another one up here. Ah, they're so beautiful. Now that I've seen one, there's heaps. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It's also making me want a ice block. You know those ice blocks that have the toucan as their um, logo? It's like a tutti frutti or something. <laughs> so cool. Alex oh, okay. oh. I just got into a town and I asked where some food and breakfast is and where the shop is and this lady has just said to me, what, eat at my house. Bodas, <laughs> 15 años, algún I'm being walked off. I've had a really good time. We've rested. We've gotten ready for a birthday party, and before the fun begins, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so lovely. I just got adopted in two seconds of arriving in this town, and now I've been invited to Christmas, which I may do. <laughs> So it rained all night yesterday and all afternoon. I set my tent up in the rain and, um, you know, it was just a long wet night. Ooh, I think my tent is approaching the end of its days. The hole inside of my tent, I don't know if you can see this, but it's completely saturated and I don't know if that means that it's at the end of its life the tent or um, if it's got holes but the hole inside is just wet and when it starts raining it just quickly becomes wet again so I think it's not condensation I think it's <sighs> I had to put wet clothes on this morning and um, in the distance I saw this um, service station and I just had a break so I was like damn but I thought no I'll poke my head in because it could be that they have a um, coffee machine they had one I was so excited I grabbed the cup and I was like yes and the guy that was already filling his coffee saw me put hot chocolate in it because I actually go one hot chocolate one coffee it's like a better combination because I frequent these machines and um, when they're around. And uh, he goes, I'm gonna buy your hot chocolate for you. And walked off, paid for it and left, <laughs> which is so nice. I said to him, I can pay for it. But even then he didn't want the money. He just um, saw that I was so happy, probably because I, he saw that I put hot chocolate in, which is like such a kiddie thing to <laughs> be excited about. Um, and it was just, well, oh, it was such a beautiful exchange. And now I'm super happy. And then a man came out and showed me his, um, adoption center that he's got for dogs and I was so chuffed about the hot chocolate I didn't even think to put make it a video but someone's doing that too which is really cool nice area someone recently commented about how I never do any photos or videos of the rain so you don't see all the climates that I'm walking in um, so this is for you <laughs> um, it's not actually just drizzling right now so I can get away with pulling my phone out but typically the phone just gets wet and then it goes crazy not wanting to have any of the buttons pushed. So I'll show you what the weather is looking like. Um, so you can see the delight I'm experiencing this morning. <laughs>
They're about to have a, another stowaway. <laughs> Two minutes ago, she ran out and I thought it was Wombat tapping my hand and she pretty much just threw herself into my legs. Times like these, I'm like, hmm, maybe I can have a second dog. Can't save every one of them. <laughs> but I can try and find somewhere for her. It's weird though, I don't know. She's probably got a family. She's not emancipated like most of the other dogs, so we'll see. Maybe she's just a friendly dog. Hasta luego. Gracias. Just had a minute to walk it off, but um, Wombat and I just crossed that bridge, and it's um, typical in this area. But it's the first one. Well, it's the highest and longest one, and the first one that hasn't had mud yeah, packed between the pipes. Nice so we slow. walked along, and he, Wombat was doing fine, and he suddenly slipped, balked, and nearly ran himself right off the bridge in a panic. Careful, careful, stop, 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 stop! Stop! So, um, I put him on the lead and he was doing okay again, but then freaked out and I had to calm him down. Then I had to drop my pack and um, pick one bat, one bat up and carry him on my side. So I've got completely covered in mud. And then just right after we got off the bridge, I went and got my pack and returned and was putting it back on and my ute came and I could have just put him in the ute to send him over in the first place. We just ran over it like there's no big deal. Meanwhile, <laughs> there's this huge space in between and it's really tempting to walk on it. But then I have to remember, and yeah, that is just mud and big enough for my leg to fall through. <laughs> I am having I'm having so much luck um, depending on how you look at it today was quite the day I um, had all the usual nice experiences and interactions and um, this lady offered for me to sleep on her floor um, in the town prior to where I am now. And I was very tempted to stay, but also I know that to get on the roll for the last few towns of where I want to stay before I finish for Christmas and New Year, um, I kind of have to keep progressing. So I said no. And um, about a kilometer into walking, it just started raining like you wouldn't believe big time. Um, and so I was walking, 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 and I got sick of it. I saw a abandoned house and I was like, ah, well, there's an abandoned shelter. And I thought, great, I'll just set my tent under there because, you know, whatever. I'll make up for the kilometers tomorrow because I was just saturated and getting a bit over it. Um, and was there for like two minutes and then suddenly I started getting attacked by bees and Wombat was completely swarmed. So we ran for it. And then I realized I left my hiking pole behind, which I need for my tent. So I had to run back in and then run back out again. And finally I made it to this town, completely drenched. And I went to the first house and I was just like, hey, can you tell me two things? One, can you tell me where there's a shop and if there is a shop? And two, can you tell me um, if there's like hospital here, there's rooms like this one that you can rent in town? And she's like, no, and I'm like, that's okay. I didn't think there would be, but is there somewhere where I can make my tent under a roof maybe? Because it's just so wet. And she was like, yeah, but you're gonna have to get permission. Um, and I'm like, yep, yeah, no problem. How can you help me find that person? And then her husband was like, ah, my dad has like a whole spare area upstairs. She can just stay there. And so um, he came here to ask his dad. And of course his dad said yes. And then I went to the shop to buy um, some food for tomorrow and it turns out it's his sister so she's just like made me dinner and hot drinks my feet are so sore and I was so cold that I was just so grateful and then I've hobbled back here now 
and it's all of 6 p.m. and I'm so tired. I'm ready to sleep all night. And they said if the river's too high to cross tomorrow, that I can just stay here until it's gone down because it's been raining so much. I might not be able to cross tomorrow. It's raining this morning. Um, all my clothes are completely saturated. I. I'm pretty glad though that I got to stay in town last night. I'm just leaving now. It's 6 a.m. But this town doesn't get up as early as the other towns, so I'm being kind of quiet. Uh, anyway, despite hanging everything up last night, all my clothes are still saturated. Um, but if we don't get swarmed by bees today, it's going to be a better day. <laughs> got warned last night that I might not be able to cross this bridge if the water's risen too high since all the rain's been coming through. I didn't quite understand what they were saying. I think that the cars go through the water and pedestrians can go over a bridge. Anyway, I'll find out soon enough. Uh, I've been invited to go back <laughs> to the house if um, I can't pass the river. Hey. <laughs> Um, I did just cross a bridge though and I can sort of see how maybe what they were saying is that the bridges are flat and so the water can cross over the bridge if it's too high and then you can't see the bridge and I can also understand why it would be dangerous to walk over because these bridges are um, constructed with pipes so it's already hard to walk on without being able to not see where you're stepping. We'll see. This is my current state, by the way. <laughs> Don't know what I was complaining about. There's some dry patches. <laughs> <clears throat> so far, I cannot see a bridge. It's like the best bridge I've seen in days. I cannot believe I was warned about it. Uh, I should have left at the normal time. I left later so I could see. And then, um, well, as I was walking here, I realized that even if I'd left at the right time, by the time I got here, it would have been daylight. But the um, really nice man that hosted me last night, um, he was adamant that I should take care. <laughs> And he had super grandpa vibes, so I couldn't not listen. And now I'm like, ah, I could have left at two in the morning and it would have been fine. <laughs> anyway, I'm relieved. That's one thing. So dangerous. Sí, mira, está muy enojado. No sé por qué, porque uh, por Cerro de Machital. No, antes. Colonia Francisco Villa. Eso. Es, de, de aquí es como hora y media caballo. Huh. En, esta, en serio. Sí, porque qué tanto. Six, seven, eight. Do, para mí dos horas y quince. Ahí se quedó ayer. No. <laughs> Hasta luego. That is one jealous dog. <laughs> See ya. Oh. And now you two have a dog to cycle with. <laughs> I can hear monkeys again. They have a monkeys. Very distinct call. But of course they've gone quiet. <laughs> two days left worth of hiking um, and they're short days and I had plenty of time to find a camp today but I actually ended up 
staying in this little cabin, which is like a pretty holy <laughs> little shack. Um, and it's really very affordable. I mean, it's 100 pesos, so it's like less than $10. Um, and for that reason, it actually, I've moved all the pillows off. Everything is full of mold. But I just, the man, um, so I stopped in here to have lunch. And I'd seen on the map that there was somewhere for um, hospitaje, which is, you know, the typical cheap rooms that you can stay in. Um, and he offered me a whole bunch of different food. And then later he apologized because he's, you know, he was just saying, I also don't have a lot of money looking at me or covered in mud and whatever else. And I was like, what are you, like, what are you apologizing for? I, it was just, I was at such a loss that um, when I found out that he was the one that had the hospital here, I asked about it. And, um, you know, probably I'd rather camp when it's places um, like this where there's mold. Um, but also when I pass through communities where there are people that could do with, you know, a spare 10, of course, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can to legitimately give someone some money. So here we are. Wombat won't even get up on the bed <laughs> and I've got itchy bites, but I think that's just coincidental. Anyway, two days to go and I'm on Christmas holidays. Today is my second last day of walking for the year. Pretty excited. One that's right here with me, being a rat bag. He's been barking at my feet all morning. I'm surprised he's not barking now. Um, anyway, I'm just approaching uh, the third state that I've been walking in since arriving to Mexico. Um, I'm gonna cross into it in a couple of hundred meters, which is really motivational for me. I don't even know why they're invisible lines, but I get excited to see it on the map. The first state I was in when I arrived in Mexico was Chiapas. Now I'm in Veracruz and I'm about to get to Oaxaca, where I'll be spending most of Christmas, actually. Um, but we'll be traveling around with family as well. So it's just so exciting because it's one step closer to being with family, one step closer to being to the end of the year. Uh, <laughs> so good. six hour bus ride later and I'm now in a whole new climate in Oaxaca, Mexico where I will be meeting my family. I feel like Christmas is already here. This is where I'm going to leave you for the year. A friend of mine told me a year ago about this bakery and I've been walking towards it for the whole year hoping to make it here for the end of the year. I'm cheating because I'm two weeks away on the actual walk from getting here, uh, but apparently they have the best almond croissants in the entire Americas, so I'm gonna go check it out now. That is really good. I didn't realize it was gonna be crispy. It's so delicious. 